we have learned that a sequence of numbers is a pattern of numbers or a set of numbers that follows a specific format. In the case of infinite sequences, we may ask the question, do the terms grow without bounds or do they settle down around a particular value? In section 9.1.2, we'll learn how to find the limit of a sequence. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals a number l, where l is finite, we say that the sequence converges. Otherwise, the sequence diverges. In example 5, we want to determine whether the sequence converges, that is it has a finite limit, or diverges. Its limit goes to positive or negative infinity. So in example A, we have a sub n equals 2 to the nth power minus 1. And we want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the nth power minus 1. Well, looking at this first term, as the exponent approaches infinity, 2 raised to an arbitrarily large exponent is itself arbitrarily large. So we would describe the limit here as being infinity. Technically, the limit does not exist, but we could describe the behavior of the terms of that sequence as increasing without bounds by saying the limit as is infinity. Because this is not a finite value, we would conclude this sequence diverges. For example b, we have b sub n equals negative 1 to the nth power over n factorial. Notice the numerator causes each term to alternate in sign. So this is an example of an alternating sequence. The denominator is n factorial, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on and so forth. So to determine if this sequence converges or diverges, we're going to calculate the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power divided by n factorial. To think about this limit, you may want to consider two options. If we look at negative 1 to the nth power, where n is an even number, if n is even, then the value of this fraction is positive 1 over n factorial for n even. If n is odd, then that exponent will be negative. In either case, the limit of both of those two expressions approaches 0 as n approaches infinity. So because both of those subsequences approach 0, the limit of this sequence is also 0. Because that is a finite limit, then we would say that this sequence converges. The next sequence we'll consider is c sub n equal to sine of n pi over 2. Now in all of these cases, we're assuming that n begins at 1 and then it continues to infinity. To determine if this sequence converges, we need to know the limit as n approaches infinity of sine of n pi over 2. Well, we can tell that the argument here is approaching infinity, as n approaches infinity, but the values of sine are cyclical as we work our way around the unit circle. So let's examine a couple of individual terms of this sequence. Notice if n is equal to 1, we end up with sine of pi over 2, which is 1. If n is equal to 2, we end up with sine of 2 pi over 2, or sine of pi, which is 0. For n equal to 3, we have sine of 3 pi over 2, which is negative 1. And for n equal to 4, we have sine of 4 pi over 2, which reduces to 2 pi. We're back to 0. Now, if we continue incrementing n by 1, we're going to cycle again through each of these four values and then back around for the next four integer values of n. This continues indefinitely. So this value never settles down around a finite number. The limit is not infinite, but because the limit does not approach a specific finite value, we would say this limit does not exist. So this is another way that a sequence can diverge. Either the limit is not finite or there is no limit at all. Now we will be looking at determining if series 
converge or diverge. This is to come in future lessons. So at this point, I want to make sure you understand that it's very easy to determine if a sequence converges or diverges. If a sequence has a finite limit, it converges. Otherwise, it diverges. So be able to contrast this with new information coming up about series.